All right, um, well, I've been doing a couple of things here. Um, basically, my schedule kind of looks like this because I'm waiting for the heads to arrive. They should arrive in about one week. So, um, I'm trying to prepare the other stuff so that it goes quickly once they're here. Um, so, I mocked up the heater boxes with the hoses, the tins, and the grommets. Uh, hard line, fuel line, I, my flaring wasn't working very well, so I got a solution to that. And um, the push rod measuring tool, um, I've done an initial length calculation for that. Um, so, firstly, these are my CSP 42 millimeter heater boxes. You can see they says CSP on them. Um, 42 millimeter, yeah, that references the size of these uh, tubes here uh, that the exhaust actually goes through. So you can measure this and see that it is, well, 42, basically that's this 41.5, but yeah, 42 millimeter. Um, also over here, let's see here, that is 42. So yes, 42 is the one and five eighths size for the heater boxes. Um, so what I did, CSP sent along these as well. Um, there's uh, two different lengths, so I believe this one is on the right one, this one's on the left one according to them. And what I did is I put that up through my grommet setup here and I tucked in the bigger grommet into the uh, smaller grommet that actually goes on the sheet metal. So that's going to go like that with these bending. These are like a little bit more industrial strength probably because the Sidewinder uh, exhaust, you know, loops around it a bunch and maybe gets hot. So this is how the heater boxes will go um, onto the tin. Uh, so I've got all the grommets, all the setup here, I've got the clamps. And then the only other thing that I'm trying to figure out, so what comes out here is a, a 50 millimeter, um, attachment but what fits onto my fan shroud is the 47 millimeter here which does not fit on there so what i have to figure out is am i going to try to stretch this out and fit it on here i like the look of these better i just have to see if i can actually stretch that out so um, that'll be interesting um so next was the, the hard fuel line so over here on my carbs i have the mock-up of my hard fuel line here with the uh, fuel pressure and what I've been doing is trying to figure out how to do the flaring because this is a stainless steel tube. It's extremely hard to do the flaring. And when I use this tool here, when I just clamp it down with, this, with the screw thing, it just pushes it through, it doesn't work. So what I've started doing, and this actually works really pretty well, um, I've taken the tube and I put it, let's see, let me get this, uh, here. Basically, I've been taking the tube, I put it into the, uh, in here, and I put this in my vise. Uh, once I have that in my vise, I clamp this down like crazy so that the vise has got this totally clamped down. And then I bought one of these, which is a 37 degree flaring tool, and I stick it on there. And in the vise, I just hit it with the hammer and then it actually holds it and it flares it and it bends it. You have to be careful that you don't split it. And then once I've got it flared, I uh, take the, um, this little grinding bit here and I just do a little uh, smoothing out. And that winds up giving me, let's see, so I did it here and I can show you what it looks like. The problem was I wasn't able to get, you know, without using the hammer technique, I couldn't get a flare that was uh, big enough. So what it looks like now when I use the, the hammer is that right there. So that's a pretty good size flare. If I get that nice up and close, you can see. And I, uh, you know, use this little bit on it. And when you look at this up close, you can see that it has a larger point of contact so that when I screw it in, 
it holds. And so I, you know, blow air on this and it doesn't uh, leak. Um, but, you know, I guess gasoline is gasoline. You want to be really sure that it's not leaking. But anyway, that's my flaring solution, which is put this in the vise, hit this with the hammer, and then your stainless steel tube can uh, bend. Um, the last thing I'm working on is my push rod. So I, my push rods, I have these kind of push rods. And these, you know, one side already has the um, ending on it and the other side is a cut to, to length. And so what I was figuring is the stock, my motor is stock size plus 4.3 millimeters, which is, if you saw me do the um, barrel spacers, you know that I did 4.3 on each side. So what I'm assuming, and this could be wrong, but we're gonna see, I start with the stock length 11.078 inches, which is 281.4 millimeters, and I add 4.3 millimeters because I barrel spaced them out. So that should give me a initial length of 285.7 millimeters. So what I did is I have this pushrod measuring um, tool, which you use to just set your geometry. And if you look at the cut to fit, so what I did first of all is I set this to be uh, 285.7, so that basically winds up being 28, I don't know if you can see that, but it's basically 28.57 uh, centimeters. And um, that is now set where I, I tighten this nut, and then I look at this and I compare it with the stock push rod here. And you can see what's gonna have to happen because you are using, let's see if I can get the connector that you have to put on there. So the connectors at the top, that is to say the endings at the top, look something like this here so that is going to wind up going into here you can see so what's going to have to wind up happening is after I measure this and if that happens to be the exact right length then I would cut let's see I would cut this to basically be about right there. So I'd have to cut this about here. I'd have to cut about ah, three quarters of a centimeter off of this in order to get that. And then of course you have to do all eight of them exactly perfect. Um, so I did that on the other uh, motor, but they were all uh, pretty much stock length. So um, then what happens is this will fit into my, um, these are 1.4 ratio rockers, which you know, when you look at how this fits in, you know, this is going to go right in here. Um, and then into the engine block through the pushrod tube. And the shape of the measuring tool is roughly the same. So I think that that ought to give me a good measurement for my geometry once I get there. All right, well, that is all I've got going on for now. And, uh, you know, as soon as the heads arrive, I should have more. Um, I also am waiting on the springs for the throttle return and a couple other things. But um, uh, really, I'm, I'm just waiting for the heads right now. So, all right.